Hello, welcome. Kylie Bertucci here, Stamping Up and Demonstrate in Australia. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to be looking at this card that I did a couple of days ago on my blog and the alternative uh, case with the different colours that I did yesterday. So as promised, here's the video. I really love these colours. I just think they look fantastic together. This is the Island Indigo, Blackberry Bliss and Smoky Slate. I normally am not a fan of Blackberry Bliss, as I mentioned on my blog a couple of days ago, but I just love this colour combination together. I think it really pops with the beautiful watercolour wings. So let's have a look at another alternative today. And I'm just going to go through uh, the splatter technique with the glitter. Uh, those that are in the States, uh, they had a convention just recently and Brandy showed this technique and I just instantly fell in love with it but I've got a little bit of a twist on her splatter technique I call it the strategic splatter technique because for some reason my splatter just doesn't quite hit the place that I want it to go so I'm kind of ad-libbing on that on that technique so let's get into it I'll show you all my tips and tricks now okay so let's jump in and see how I've made these cards this was the beautiful one I did a couple of days ago with the Island Indigo Smoky Slate and Blackberry Bliss, as I mentioned. This one today that I'm going to show you is the one from yesterday, which is the Coral, uh, Calypso Coral, Chocolate Chip and Sahara Sand. And, you know, of course, you can try all sorts of different alternatives uh, for your butterflies. The watercolour wings just come up in so many beautiful ways. And we'll have a look at a few tips along the way. So without further ado, let's start out. I'll keep that there for a little bit of a while. Now, with the cardstock, I've used the thick white cardstock, Whisper White. If you haven't used it yet, please get it. I'm serious, this cardstock is the best, particularly for something like this when there's no real layers that have been added to it. I did add later on, and I'll do the same with my card here. I've just done an inside layer, which um, just adds a little bit of bling to it. Now, starting out, we want to have a flat base layer. So when I'm stamping, particularly in this situation where I'm stamping off the cardstock, I like the cardstock to be flat. Now the, card, the stamp set that we're using for this is the Gorgeous Grunge. I've just used a couple of the splatters from there. Don't you love the splatters? Oh my goodness, they are just so good. I can never get enough of the splatters. So I'll bring my Sahara sand over. Now the best thing with these type of things is you can, with splatters, you can do it full strength or you can stamp off and then do a half strength splatter. It's really up to you what look you're wanting or you could do a combination of both. But I really love it when it's so stamped off the page and there you can see a little combination of a few stronger ones and a few lighter ones. Now with this particular Gorgeous Grunge stamp set, because there's little sort of splatters here, you've got to be careful not to push down too hard because you'll end up getting a little bit of the edge showing. So just be careful not to wobble and just push down but not push down too hard. Now our next splatter that we're going to use is this one here from the Gorgeous Grunge. So I'll get a block for that one. And then just stamp a few of those. Again, in no particular place. But the key with these sort of things is just swapping it around so that you're not sort of replicating the same splatter. And if you wanted to stamp off, you could. Totally up to you what look you want. So in the middle here, I might stamp off so it's a little bit lighter. Then we want to do the words. Now the words is from you might be wondering where they came from but that's from the by the tide stamp set and they came from there so I've just used that and again in the Sahara sand and I stamped off all of those but if you want more of a stronger one you could it's really up to you what what you want to do so as you can see I'm not really fussy <laughs> keep it simple now what we're going to do is our sentiment and as you can see it had the two layers the shading to it 
So what we're going to do is we'll first do the chocolate chip. And what I've noticed with this stamp set, and particularly with most polymers actually, is just making sure that you use the uh, stamp and pierce mat if you want a really crisp looking image. But particularly with this word, I've noticed that the A seems to be, after the M, that A there seems to be a little bit lower. So you just want to make sure that it's got enough ink on it. Try and line it up as much as you can. If you're a real perfectionist, then I'd definitely say grab the stamp -a -jig. There's that one, and you can just stamp it off. I've got my scrub here, so we'll get it ready, because we're going to a lighter colour now, so I always like to scrub in between a lighter colour. And then we go back to the Sahara scent. Oh, actually, what I did need to do is we need to use the chocolate chip again to actually I'll put this on the white so that you can see this properly. Now if you haven't got used to using this tool you really need to because it is just the bomb. I remember when I finally worked it out. It did take me a while so don't feel bad if you find it difficult to work out. Uh, but basically you're just putting the clear sheet right up against the block in the corner you're getting your, your block right in the corner of the stamp and majig and then stamping. Now what that is telling you, as you can see here, the little A is missing, but it'll give us the idea. What it's telling you is exactly where that stamp is going to go when you place it in this corner. Okay? So then what we do, give that one a clean. Then what we're going to do is our Sahara sand. And this is going to create the little shadow underneath. So what you do is you just line it up so that it's like, see how you can slightly see the image moving? So you just want it still touching the, the same font, but just slightly to the right and below, I did mine, on everything. So take your time. Now, once you've found where you want it, grab your little tool again, go right up against the corner, and then take your plastic away. Stamp your Sahara, make sure you're holding on to this nice and tight because if that moves, it's gonna muck up your placement. Put it right up in the corner and then push down. And push, I didn't put my little stamp and mat underneath so hopefully I get a clear enough image. And stamp, yes, it turned out great. So that just gives it a little layer and a shadowing effect. It came up beautiful in the uh, Blackberry Bliss and the Smoky Slate as well. So the Smoky Slate really brings it a nice shadow. So now that we've done that, we're going to move to the splatter technique with the glitter. This is such a brilliant technique. When I saw Brandy do this, uh, because I'm in Australia, I didn't get to go to the US convention, but um, my husband and I watched it streaming it and we uh, we loved it we got to learn this technique so you just put a little bit of glue I just used my glue dot a uh, glue block I thought it was really easy aqua pen add a little bit of water to it so you're just squeezing the water out of the aqua pen dropping it in and just sort of mixing it around and that that should be good you don't have to have it too runny now what you're doing, I'll just move a couple of things out of the way because we don't want splatter everywhere. Put that over there. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you, but this stamp set here, the You're Amazing, it comes from the stamp set that's found in the Watercolour Wishes kit. So this is the amazing sentiments that you get with the kit. And the kit is found in the catalogue on page 80. So if you have a look there, it is just gorgeous. And I've, I've already done the kit, but now I get to utilise the stamp set. So it's well worth its value because you get yeah, the stamp set, the cards, and it makes 25 different, no, 20 different cards, and they're all unique. So every single one is different. So that's an awesome stamp uh, kit to look into. But anyway, back to the splatter technique. So we just... Grab the glue and then all we're doing 
is we're tapping like this. So you can practice it on, on another piece of paper somewhere. If you feel like it doesn't have enough water, just add a little bit more water because you really want it to splatter everywhere. So just tap. And I don't know if you can see that, but you're just tapping it all over your work. Now, if you find, so I can see that needs a little bit more water. Yeah, that's a bit better. Play around with it until you get it right. Now, what I found too, I mean, Brandy made it look so good, but what I found is some of the um, drops didn't place exactly where I wanted it to go. So I went back in and just did a couple of my own little dots in places that I wanted bigger or smaller. So this is my strategic <laughs> splatter technique. So you just come in and you can have bigger dots then and smaller dots. But yeah, it's up to you how you want to do it. You can do the splatter or you can do the strategic splatter. So there's a couple. Now we're going to move those out of the way because we're about to bring in the glitter. Now, if you haven't had a look at this stamp and glitter, it is so beautiful. And exactly what Brandy mentioned, it's just so fine and beautiful. It's such good quality. So I'm going to get rid of this because this has got splatters on it. So we move that out of the way and we open up our glitter. With the Sahara Sand, I really thought the gold would be a nicer look. So we just pour that over the top. Don't be afraid. As long as you don't get it all over yourself, then be very afraid. Pour it all over the top. You want it to get every dot. And then we just pour that off. And as you can see, I've just used a piece of um, paper to collect it all. Oh, must have got a bit of glue up there, but that's okay. Note to self, close the card when you're spluttering. <laughs> Now, as you can see, is that not just the most gorgeous effect? I just love it. And I'm not a glitter girl, but I'm telling you, I just think that this is just beautiful. So if you wanted to now, you might notice that there's, you know, a little bit over this side, but barely over this side, and you want to add a little bit more. Feel free to go back in and do your strategic splatter effect and just add a couple more dots. Make sure that you grab some some of the glue because you don't just want water you want it to be glue for it to stick and then you can just dab a couple of extra dots and again come in with your with your glitter and just pour over the top and then you've got some extra splatters isn't that amazing because you're amazing now put our glitter back in we'll tip it back in the we don't want to waste any of that beautiful glitter. And then it feels like I haven't used any, which is what makes these things so much value because they last forever. Lid, very important. You do not want that glitter everywhere. I've heard disaster stories. So our next thing is stamping our watercolour wings. I like to just grab, oh, it's got little bits of cardstock that, a leftover so we're going to do that and then we're going to cut it out using the bold butterfly framelit in the big shot so we'll get our butterflies where are we here we've got these three that we need and then we've got the antenna and we will be needing some dimensionals too okay so let's have a look here. Move those two out of the way. We don't want cards getting damaged or inked where they shouldn't be. So what we're going to do with the watercolour wings is we'll start, I mean a few people start different ways but I like to start with the base and if you, again if you're a perfectionist get that stamp and the jig out because it's Look, you can line it up because it's the polymer, but it's tricky. Like, it's not super, super simple. So you just have to take your time if you're going to line it up with the polymer, which might end up just as quick doing it with the stamp image. So there's that one. Now, that is meant to be a little bit grungy. 
that base. At first I thought there was something wrong with my stamp, but it is meant to be that way. Then we'll go, I mean either either, it doesn't matter with the wings, but we're doing something a little bit different to the card. We'll do chocolate chip on the outside rather than the Calypso coral. We'll do that on the inside. Now, what I have learnt with this is it's not perfectly going to line up. Down the bottom seems to be overhanging a bit more than up the top. So you want to line up the top and line up your wings on either side. And if you can stand above it, at the moment I'm not standing above it, so I don't know how good it's going to be, but we'll give it a shot. Give that a push down. Remember, try not to wobble. Wobbling is not good, just pushing. So there we go. Oh, that was pretty good. Couldn't have got it more perfect if I tried. Then we're going to go our last one. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have spe spoken too soon. I've still got a couple more layers to go. <laughs> so here's the Calypso Coral coming in. We layer that. Now, with this one, I look at the middle section and the top. The bottom does seem to overhang, but the top, if you can get that lined up and the middle lined up, then you're doing pretty well. And just slowly come in, push down. And remember, you can use your stamp and pierce mat if you like to, but I find with this one it's actually been okay. Pretty. Now, what I like to do with the antenna, I don't know if others have found the same thing, but because it is very specific with the cutout, I actually cut it out first and then come in and do the, sorry, not the antenna, the body. Um, yeah, I just find that that's a lot easier to line up after it's cut. So I've got one that I have done earlier here. So you can see how different it dries. Like this is quite vibrant still, but it dries that beautiful coral color. It's more of a reddy color when it first comes out. So this is our beautiful uh, butterfly in the watercolor wings. Now what I did on my card, you'll probably notice it here, sorry for the big arm in the way, but I added a few of the gold uh, glitter to the butterfly as well and that was using the same technique just using the glue that was left over from before and just tapping it where we want it and then opening up our glitter make sure you move all your work out of the way so that you don't get glitter everywhere and just tap that on top there Give it a flick just to get off any access. Oh, you can see here it just sort of came off a bit, but you can just come back in and grab a bit on top. Yeah, that's better. And just move it away, flick it. And there you have it, this gorgeous watercolour wings butterfly with our little additions. And then literally all I did after that is grab one dimensional. Yep, that's it, just one and just stuck it on the back, pulled it off. Oh, I better move my glitter. I'm going to end up with a mess everywhere. I'm slowly learning. I'm not the most organized crafter. I'm actually chaotic. I'm a bit like a chef in the kitchen that just thinks that, you know, you're going to have a dishwasher assistant that's going to help you with all your mess. I put a mess everywhere. Paul Bruno comes in and has an anaphylactic shock when he comes into my room. It's a pig style. So then we just lie that down. I call that being really creative when you're a messy creator. We haven't got time to be clean when you're creative. <laughs> I'll keep telling myself that. <laughs> So there we go, there's our beautiful card. You could add some of that beautiful um, gold metallic uh, thread behind the back as well if you wanted to. I think that that would look incredible. And it's just a, a really gorgeous, great card 
and you learn a lot from it. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and that you learnt something new for your creativity. If you have any questions, please do ask. I love comments as well, as most of you know, so feel free to leave those as well. If you live in Australia, uh, you can head over to craftykylie.com where you can purchase any of these items on my online store. And also feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you enjoyed the the uh, video today because I'll be having a lot more videos coming up. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your support and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.